Welcome back. Another Pocket Presence quarterback breakdown. This time, quarterback Spencer Rattler, the South Carolina Gamecocks. He's an interesting case. Was recruited to go play quarterback under Lincoln Riley. Was beat out by Caleb Williams, who now is who people think will be the number one overall pick this year. And he's been a little bit of a journeyman. Has had a lot of obstacles thrown his way. So things come up. Fast forward to now, he's ready to go to the NFL. He had 3,200 yards passing this year, 19 touchdowns, eight interceptions, and played a gauntlet of a schedule in the SEC. Obviously, with one of the lesser teams with the Gamecocks this year, Year. He played against good opponents every single week, and he showed flashes of why he's considered an NFL quarterback. And we're going to dive into the film, particularly his game against the University of Florida this year. And we're going to see what he looks like on film, how he throws the ball, how he operates, and what his system looked like. And we're going to give an unbiased analysis of who this guy is. Let's dive in. Starting out in empty. End up going with the kind of cover. I don't know if that's cover three, cover four. Let's see how it plays out. Only rushing three. He's kind of coming down to play the hook off. I think right here, quick game, just jam it. First play of the game, take your guy. That's your first read, take it, move on. If not, if you feel a squeeze, replace it with this guy. You got this extra element, so that's not where you wanna go. So I think right here, all he should be thinking is, all right, take this guy, move on, get the first completion. He passes him up, checks it down, which is not the end of the world, but this guy's gotta go make a play. Don't pass up one gimme to get a maybe, but just trigger it. Got good feet though, good rhythm, good technique. Third and 10. We're getting blitzed. We're bringing it. What's the concept here? I like a little in route. This is probably gonna be a corner. So you got a through route, maybe a Dover on the backside. Yep. What he's gotta do here, one, two, three. Yeah, this is what they're running. They're running like a crash concept. So this guy, they want him on an out route. They want this guy on an in route here to here. If this guy gets bad leverage, who he's kind of waiting on, just move on. You have good leverage right here. First hitch, second hitch, kind of passes him up and throws it back and away. So this is like supposed to be a post curl. That should be pass interference or holding or something. But this is where the ball needs to go in this situation. Unfortunately, in college football, you have this ref standing right in the window every single time that I watch this film. It's insane. I don't know why he's there. He's just standing there in the way, but they get one. They get PI, they move on. Watch it from his point of view. First read, this is his first read, he's got an out route. Guy has outside leverage, that's gonna be tough. I like that he gets off of him as quick as he does. Right here, gets off of him, but I think right here, he passes this guy up. I think this guy, sharp angle, he's playing you a man. This ball should be caught right here. Unfortunately, it's right where the ref is and it makes it tough, but he moves on, tries to throw to the post girl, he gets pulled and they're gonna get the PI. Just had a big run, quick motion out. Drops back, quick game, scrambles. Capable, nice, is that a bound? Delivers a little bit of a blow there, I like that. He's sturdy. Quick game here, you got nothing. He's gloved, he's gloved. Go scramble. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's kind of creative as a scrambler. He's uh, kind of reminds me of Baker Mayfield a little bit with his build, that type of mold. First and goal from the six. Tight set, play action. It's out of there, resets. Oh, that's money. This is awesome. This is this is great. So he goes here. This guy is already downfield after play fake. I don't know why they're trying to run a goal line fade with a play fake, but here we are. He's going to be late to it. it. Says no. He's got this guy leaking. Feels like he needs to get out. I don't know if this was designed or what, but probably not a real option there. Probably would have gotten picked, especially rolling back to your left. I like that he scrambles, flips his hips, fades away, and just flicks it. 10, 25 yards back of the end zone, up and away, money ball. I like that. Guys that can be creative in the red zone, man, always find a way to have success in the NFL. Let me rephrase that. Guys that have success in the red zone being creative have a better chance of finding success in the NFL. That right there is kind of like that Minshew-esque style of playing. Here, there, scramble, let's go make a play, keep your eyes downfield. I'm not gonna beat anybody with my feet, so let's go see how creative I can be to buy time and deliver a dot on the back of the end line money good ball i mean he can sling it dude that style of play gives him a chance in the nfl first and 10 play fake under center first hitch second hitch balls out deep ball under thrown but i kind of like it under thrown pylon route where did he set up from from the 16 to the 50 34 yards to the to be another 18 yards 50 something yards on a pylon throw fine i like it he looks comfortable under center like he doesn't look uncomfortable looks like he's done it a time or two good play fake 
Like that looks like an NFL quarterback to me. Where a lot of guys get under center, they look uncomfortable. Obviously he wished he had more on that ball, but it's not really his game. First and 10. Now we're getting into the boot game. This is straight up NFL playbook type of stuff. Half roll. Let's see where he goes with the ball. Nice, checks it down. Accurate, drop step, gets vertical. If you break a tackle, you got a big play. Processing. Nice. All right, first and 10, quick little screen, good accuracy. Looks comfortable throwing those. Some guys just look uncomfortable throwing these. Like they try to short arm it and not very accurate and checks it. All right, they just ran for a touchdown, 14-13. Second and seven now. Little toss, let's get out of that. Don't even wanna, don't wanna see it. Second and nine. One, two, three, screen. I really like the demeanor that I've, that I'm seeing so far him playing with. Like he doesn't look panicked, comfortable in the system, feet are good. Like does he have the biggest arm in the world? No, but he looks like compact as a thrower. Throws a good ball. Oh no, that's unfortunate. All right, here we go. First and 10. Play fake, one, two, three, four, five. First hitch, balls out on a deep crosser, accurate. He's gonna be throwing those in the NFL. Ooh, get out of there, big dog. He's gonna be throwing those in the NFL. Let's watch this other view. Compared to some of the other guys that we watch, watch how much of a technician he looks like with his feet. He's not sloppy, he's under control. One, two, three, four, five. First hitch, balls out, rips it in stride. Like that is an NFL rep. He looks comfortable, he trusts the footwork, the time, the accuracy, the play and he can deliver on a rope. That ball is getting there in a hurry. You don't see a lot of guys in college throw deep crossers. Some guys have to acquire that throw when they get to the NFL and figure it out, but I like that he's already running those because some guys don't throw in between the hashes or across the field like that. It's vertical to check down, side to side, but he has a lot of reps doing all of it. We go get into a creative little scramble again. See it. Okay, first and 20, they're backed up a little bit with a penalty, eight yard gain. What do we had here? They're running heel, post, wheel, stick route, and progressing to on the backside. Probably could have taken this stick, maybe be a little bit more patient there. Maybe not, you feel him driving down, that's fine. Outside of him driving down. These are longer throws in college, you have to be more cognizant of that, where in the NFL, the hashes are like here and here, aligned with the uprights. College hashes are far, so like wide side of the field throws are longer and a little bit more risky in college. Third and six, critical down. That guy's traveling over. They're getting out of there. Where they run an invert, a little bit of invert-ish. Yeah, they are. They're getting the Tampa two invert. So he's the deep half, he's the deep half, he's the deep mic. Let's go. Doesn't get confused. Maybe he does get confused. I don't know what route concept he had. This little sketchy route concept on third and six. He's covered, he's covered, he's covered. He's a chip release. Now you gotta go make a play. Like, yeah, he gets uncovered late once he starts to scramble, but he's covered when he's going to read him first. There we go, get out of there. It'll be creative, I like that. That looked a little Minshew-esque. Dude, that might be my comp for Spencer Rattler. Garner Minshew, as I'm seeing it right now, is my Spencer Rattler comp. I'm standing by that. Second and 10, drops back, checks it down to the flat. They're just gonna let him get it, aren't they? Ooh, walks in, love that hurdle. He was quick decision, got it out there. Easy, easy. Now you're just playing backyard football. Nice and easy, everybody's open. Love when it works out that way. First and 10. Weird defensive front right now. They got stand-up guys walking around. Two real linemen. What are they running? I don't know. You got play fake. I mean, they had a lot of guys out there covering. You really only have two man rush. These guys are gonna look to hug. Obviously see the soft part of the pocket starting to form, but you have one, two, three man routes versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people in coverage. This is an unfortunate spot to be in as a quarterback. There is no one open, go make a play. You already know dropping back, you're gonna have to make a play when they're not blitzing and you have a three man route versus eight people in coverage. So I don't blame him for getting out of there early. Here we go, second and 10. Let's see, back. Balls out, back, back and keep his feet, that'd be ideal. I know he's just, he's trying to stack completions here. He sees that, he's got good leverage here. Like coaching wise, what you wanna see is you wanna see that tight end cheat is split a little bit so we can run this angle and not have to go underneath of the D end and give this guy a free access, it's just like coaching stuff. Look at how he has to release underneath. 
or you turn that into a bubble this way depending on the release angle but anyways obviously you can look at the film this guy would be ideal to go to but there's nothing to tell you that pre-snap maybe maybe since you start when you pull your hands up you see this guy going back you know it's gonna be that invert two you've seen already this guy's gotta fly out or else you got a freebie but i mean that's also a really long throw from left side of the field but no harm, no foul. Gators are doing a lot of things on defense, mixing things up, standing up a bunch of guys, moving guys around. Like they're trying to just create havoc. Now here, safety down, guys in the box stacked, get a load front. Might be getting something like this down here with him playing the tight end. See how these guys adjust for these two. But I'm looking out my eyes. Here we go. Comes down, he's gonna take the safety. So he's gonna come, or he's gonna take the tight end. He's gonna come. Third and seven. One, two, three. You have nothing. You have two guys in the same spot. You have double here. You have a guy out leverage on here and you're going to get sacked. Nothing you can do there. Take care of the football. That's what I could tell you. I do like, like he was still calm. He knew he had shit in his face, but he was still calm on his drop back. You're down 21, 24. Looks like they're going into half. Second and four. Play fake half roll. Okay. Don't know what the design of this play was. A little weird having the stuff go the same way, but I don't really even know how to judge that. Looks like they, I don't know. That's weird. It's not great football. They got the first down. We'll move on. All right, first and 10 under center. Play action. First hitch. It's unfortunate, man. When you're playing this close to the boundary and you got a stand up, like in the NFL, remember, this is where the hash is. So the stand up guy is here. This guy, these are in the same spot. So for this guy who's standing here to get out there is a longer way to get out there. These one on ones become a lot more viable. But if you get a guy underneath and he's playing over the top in college, I mean, you're kind of screwed. And he's running play action. So his back is to this guy and he's waiting to find out what does he do. By the time he gets out there, one is underneath of it, like it's killed. These guys are doubling him. Got a lot of people blocking everybody heavy in there. There's like nothing he could actually do there. So he's got to go make a play. Spencer, I know what that world feels like. That's uncomfortable. I had that happen a decent bit in college. And it's just like, you will have more answers than that in the NFL. You will have tight ends out in routes. You will have running backs out in routes for check downs. You're not going to have two man routes and eight man protection. It's not going to happen. And that's just, that's unfortunate. Got a guy scrambling, running for his life. Chalk that up the bad scheme. Different ways to get it done, I guess. Different philosophies. But here we go. Third and eight, critical down. Again, dude, they're heating it up. They're heating it up. You know they're going to heat it up. That's their MO. These guys are coming. And now you got here, 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 here. You can go to the middle. Like, let's go see where you can win. Let's go see where your one-on-ones can win. One, two, three, first hitch, balls out. Great timing, great accuracy. Look at this, like a little pivot. Look at when he breaks down and when he triggers, he starts his pat. Ball's coming out and he's not even out of his break. That's how you win on third down in the NFL. That's how you win on third down in college. And it's that close, man. Like it is that close. And that's just how it's gotta be. So you gotta trust your guys, deliver. It's a big time play. Third and eights are hard. Like it. Great accurate ball, came in in a hurry. Four, five. Ooh, just letting it go. Oh, that was a dime. That was a dime, man. He's been getting blitzed all day long. And I love seeing how he's handling it, man. Look, you see him. Let's watch this. He's coming down to fill. They're not even, the crazy thing is they're not even really blitzing. Like they kind of are. Like he's coming down to play and then blitz. But this is just like leakage on a play action. You know you have the post. You see pre-snap safety's coming down. You see his eyes over here. He knows all he has to do is buy enough time and put it deep enough and high enough that his guy can go make a play. One, two, three, four, five. He's able to throw it off his back foot with somebody in his face. For all intents and purposes from the backed up 35. Where does this ball land? Perfectly in stride. This ball would have land on the 10. That is 55 yards off his back foot on a dime. That is what Spencer Rattler can do. And that is a checked box. That is managing pressure. That's understanding the situation. That's seeing pre-snap with recognition. That's giving a ball appropriate for how early you have to throw it. Those are things that change the outcome of games. And he's able to do that. And I've seen that actually happen a decent bit. And he's been with people in his face all game long, not really schemed up the greatest, or there's a leaker, or there's something. Like he's had to fight through adversity as a quarterback this game. And so that right there, like, getting killed to throw that ball 
That's a check box, man. That is a check box. You'd love to see it. Spencer can play. All right, but now we're back down here. We haven't scored yet. It's third and five. Let's go. What do we have? Defense is kind of not ready. You have again a full slide with an extra protector. This is like, I just, I hate this out of their scheme. He is going to be so much better of a quarterback when he's not playing in the South Carolina scheme. You have one, two, three routes on this play for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people in coverage. And okay, let's say seven people in coverage. He ends up coming late. You have three people. It's like playing seven on seven with two down men and a rush in your face that's still going to find a way to get home. Now, was that the best creativity that he could do as a scrambler? No, but like, what do you want him to do? It's just like, I, I'm tired of seeing their full slide protection with their running backs and tight ends having no work. It's a bad scheme. It's a college protection scheme that I just can't stand. They use it in the wrong situations. In the NFL, they only use that when they know they're getting zeroed. They use this as a default for, oh, we're having a hard time protecting, let's block it up. Like get people out in routes and then you settle for three. So Spencer, I promise you, you'll have more opportunities to make plays when you have the right protection scheme and guys getting out in the flats, creating stress for you to rip it to crossers, to in breakers, down in the red zone. It will, that part of the game actually gets easier when you get to the NFL. I hate seeing that. I feel bad for QBs when they got to play in that. I had to play in it. It's unfortunate, but he showed that he can do it. Here we go. Dropping back. I don't know what concept this is at all. Doesn't look like he really is running the right route with what these guys are doing. Um, I don't know. I don't know where he's supposed to go with the ball. This guy ends up open late, but maybe. Maybe that's a pre-snap alert. Deep enough to know where it looks like a just a comeback. I don't know what he's being asked to do in this play. I wouldn't even know what to call that concept. I mean, he's being forced to play a lot of backyard football. There are not many just like schemed up open receivers so far that I've seen. Besides that one deep crosser that he hit that was on the money. Third and 11. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people blocking. Three man routes. Like... At least he chips and gets out. When you have a defense that's rushing three, they end up they end up rushing this guy out here to the back. But they rush four. They're playing Tampa two. And you have a bunch of people in protection. There's no way to beat Tampa two if you're not stressing people right now. You can't afford to chip. Like these guys, they have a triangle on him. They have the same triangle on this guy. This guy's getting doubled. There's just... You're asking for your guy to be a superhero, which some way, somehow he almost was able to do. It's just not good football. I don't, I don't like their answer for pressure in this game. As a quarterback, I loved when I knew I was getting pressured. Okay, let me spread everybody out. Let me declare that stuff. Because at least if I'm getting pressured, I want to know where it's coming from. And when you go empty, the defense is forced to show their hand. A lot of times they'll check out of it too, because defense doesn't like the pressure empty on third and longs. Risk reward's not always there. 27-24. And what do you know? Let's see. First and 10. One, two, three. And this is my other problem is it's the way that they're doing this protection. And now I'm getting into like coaching shit, but this is the problem. You have a lineman. You have five linemen to block four linemen. The way that you're scheming this up is you are asking your tackle block down on a D end and leaving your tight end responsible for a D end. It's a mismatch. You shouldn't be doing that. We're getting beat over here. We're getting beat late here. You just have big on bigs. This guy's missing the block. I'm not even watching Spencer at this point, but he's just trusting. I'm going to do my seven step and a hitch. You ready to read out my hook defender? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get my eyes to the hook. But now he's not even playing ball because he knows what it is. This is where the ball hopefully ends up going. I don't know. I haven't watched this yet. He can't even really get there because of this stuff. But I know I've seen it out of Spencer. If he gets a good like good line, good scheme wise, he can take a seven step hitch and rip it to this guy. I don't even really think he's getting a chance to. I just, I'm watching a lot of really sloppy football by South Carolina and Spencer having to play superhero ball. And it's really hard to play superhero ball consistently. Again, scheme wise, like I don't want to talk too much ball, but like, let's just look at it. We're laid off the ball. I mean, if we want to coach, you got a tight end on a D end. You're asking your running back to come and help and chip. We're misstepping here. We're getting beat front side here. And you have four people being handled by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're outnumbered in the pass game and you're beat up front. Like I, I just, 
when he is put into a situation where I believe he's going to, you know, just be asked to play quarterback and not be a superhero, I think he's more ready to do that than some of these other guys that are coming out this year. He's pretty sharp with his footwork, his mechanics, his accuracy, and I think he's going to translate well to the pro scheme. Look, here we go. Give me third and six. Give me a real route concept. Give me real pass protection versus blitz. Man, and what do we got? We got a choice route, pick route. I don't know what, probably through post curl like they've been running on the backside of everything with these guys. And this is the other thing. These aren't even like viable options at this point because they've ran it every single time that they've been in this set. He's just going to undercut. He's going to drive. There's nothing like playing off of that, but okay, that's fine. Plant throw, balls out, in time and rhythm, and you get the first down. Like That's real football in the NFL. That's how it's going to play out on third downs when there's tight man coverage. Can you be accurate and decisive versus tight man coverage in the NFL on third down? Yeah, he can. A quarter, two minutes left. Let's see where we're at. Five, first hitch. Let's see if he missed one. One, two, three, four, five. Again, dude, this is the shit that's just driving me insane watching this film. Oh, man. You have four men. One, two, three routes. You got your chippers and crossers. You have not like non-viable routes being run here. Like, give me, give me like a an in. Give me like crosser. Give me something. I mean, you're running like, are you running double post? Are you running like a, like a seam and a post with a wheel? Like, I don't know what these concepts are. I don't know where you want him to go with the ball. I just, I don't know. You got mesh. That's okay. Go be go be a baller. Go be a baller. I like it. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt, man. Because I think this is a really tough scheme to play in. I don't think that he was necessarily set up to succeed. And he went out. I didn't hear any complaining about him this year. There's like off the field stuff with his personality. He's obviously got juice. He's showing he's hyped. He cares about it. I don't even know if he knows that he's kind of back against the wall with what the scheme's looking like. So I'm not seeing answers. Spencer Rattler's going to do well in the NFL if he can just lock it in and get in a situation that he can just go be a system quarterback and show his upside when he needs to. If he gets a chance. He's going to be fun because he can operate. I'm seeing that he can operate. One, two, three. First hitch. What do we got? A little slant and go. Oh my God. Dig out of it. Dig out of it. He looked over the wrong shoulder. Sluggo. Three. Right there. Do the Julio Jones dig for six yards. He turns back, slows down, opens the shoulders, then flips his hips the wrong way. Then it lands over the other shoulder. I think that's a great ball. I really think that's a great ball that did not look overthrown to me. If the receiver just digs and runs to the spot that he's supposed to, put a lot of air on that. Nice touch. Like he didn't even... Oh, man. They felt it. Oh, they felt it. I felt it too. Okay, missed stop. That's... I thought that was a good ball. Third and 11. Here we go. What are we going to do? Now we're talking. We're getting all these guys out. Tight end didn't chip. He's getting out. Running back's going to watch him, then get out. We'll see. Yep, he's out. Now we're talking. So Spencer Rattler, the first like real time I've seen on third and 11 in these types of situations where they're going to say, okay, we got to get out and get into routes. And this is a route that they went on earlier. The kind of little pivot takes his drop. This is what I like to see. Eyes down the middle of the field. I took the tight end. I like that. If these refs don't get the hell out of the way in college football. We see so many of these dudes right in the middle of windows, man. I think it makes sense. But great timing, great accuracy, good decision making. You liked your matchup, you stuck with it. For five, you knew what it was. And I like this too. I like this subtle, subtle drift in the pocket where you rise downfield while you know you're getting leakage. Don't let him influence the throw because if you were standing right here in the pocket where you initially dropped, you're probably influencing that throw. Great accuracy. I love it. All right, now we're fourth quarter. 24 27. Here we go. Fly, roll pass. It's a real play in the NFL. Nice and easy. Give it to him. Dean Mahomes hit a bunch of those throughout his career. He can operate, man. Spencer Rattler can operate. And he also can make plays with his feet scrambling. Third and three. Get into empty. I love this. Finally. Getting into empty. Defense is communicating. What are we looking for when we're in empty? We're looking for triangles. For triangle here. We're looking, does this guy widen out with this tight end? We're getting a triangle here, maybe. I'm not going to say we are. He blitzes. Triangles are done. Triangles are done. This is what we got. Ooh, but we got a dropper. Florida likes doing this. They end up playing zone. They end up playing cover three. So now you got, look, when they blitz one, pull one, as long as your line is turning to it and sliding this way, you'll pick it up. 
I should pick that up. I should pick that up. He delivered, man. This is dope. This is awesome. Cover three. Safety rotates down. Eyes down the middle of the field. I would really love to see this receiver sit uncovered on third and three. He like runs in to get covered, but just turn your eyes and sit. Be a baller. No one's going to be upset with you if you just go to make a play. What he was thinking here though, pre-snap is, all right, if he blitzes, I got here, here, to here. He starts left. This guy drops out, quickly resets. What you'd love to do is this guy to have some awareness to sit. Does not, just runs to get covered. Shit, fine. He doesn't do what I think he's gonna do. I got pressure on my face. I know that this guy's flat footed in a window. Let me rip it behind him because that's the space and we gotta have it. We gotta have it. He delivers on third down, critical situations, a lot of pressure. I'm telling you, man, he can process, he can do it. He sees the field. He sees things pre-snap, adjust to him post-snap. All right, cool. I got him, great leverage. Bam, don't got him anymore. Let me reset. We got pressure. This guy running in to get covered. Fine. Let me move on one more time. I'm not going to be able to scramble out of there. Let me sit in and deliver. That's really good by him. Let's see what we got. First and 10. Zone read. Not like fast or anything, but just smart. Gets down. Can get you a few yards. Third down threat. All you need to be in the NFL. You don't need to be a blazer. Can you move? Can you be creative? Let's see what we got. Weird play, but I like it. Weird play, but I like it. Does he get in the box? He does. He does. What is this play? Play fake. They want you to think it's going to be like this, this little half roll setup, but instead he flips out. Sells his feet. They set up the block. It's money. Oh my gosh. What's up these South Carolina players and just deboing people? 37, 34, a critical part in this game. Again, there's four minutes left in this game. What are we going to do? Second and five. We're going to keep our tight end in. We're going to full slide to three guys, make our tight end go one-on-one -on -one with the D end for whatever reason. Okay. never mind. Got a little something here. I think this is a one-on-one -on -one route to him. If he doesn't win, then it's a dash play. That's what I'm going to guess this is because he's setting outside to pin. Doesn't like his one-on-one. -on -one. Probably could have taken it. Got off of it pretty quick, but Oh, come on, dude. What are you doing? What you like to do here is you go low to high, back to low. So one, two, three. And that's the benefit that you get when you're on the run. You can stress these things out. This guy just keeps leaking, keep leaking. Then you get a free check down for 10 yards. What does he do? He doesn't get the ball and he turns his head upfield. Like, I don't know what he's doing. And then we get a little arm punt out there and we almost throw an interception. I think that's a bad decision by Spencer. Like, I think this is a bad decision. I think you do have one-on-one, -on -one, but you're on your own 28. There's four minutes left in the game. What I really would love to do, and this is again, like where I just think this team lacks, have some awareness with this guy to do what we saw Roma Dunze do in my Penix breakdown. Go up and come back down. Be an outlet to scramble. I don't know what he's looking at. I don't know what he's thinking he's gonna block, but like be a receiver. Go up and turn back down at the sticks and don't even let your quarterback into a position where he's gotta make this decision. But if you're Spencer Rattler, throw this ball away. Just throw this ball away. And it's a dumb decision. You take a big hit. And that's stuff that I don't think that you can get away with because that guy's gonna pick it in the league, most likely. But again, as simple as, I mean, this guy is stiff. I mean, he's, he's obviously not a real receiving back. He can barely, I'm not trying to dog on anybody, but he's having a tough time. Snap it or just flatten off here. And he launched it. Don't get me wrong, but that should have been picked. But again, situational football, we're 258, third and 10. They're going to bring the house. That's very much a cover zero look, but we'll see. It's pre-snap what I'm thinking. Be high alert for cover zero. Be ready to adjust if it's not. It is cover zero. Now what are you going to do? Full slide, block down, come pin help inside. What are your route concepts? I mean, what is, what, what are we doing? What is our answer versus cover zero? We're running a swirl route. That's a no. We're running a freaking pivot route. That's a no. And then we're running a, another swirl route. Like this is what I'm saying. Like third and 10 critical situation. He has no chance. He has no chance with this scheme to go make a play. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know why they think this is their best answer. If you're getting manned up, you need routes that break on the run. They had him going versus zero man, running three routes that stop. Any NFL coach will see this and be like, damn, we did not put our quarterback in a position to be successful. And now they are gonna lose this game. It's 37, 41. They had this game the whole time. I was gonna drop back and have to go be a superhero. 
unfortunate. What are they running here? They got a Rosser. Guy over here is staying there. He can cover both of these. They have a post. What's this guy running? Deep in. He's got a chance here. Could he have sat in the pocket? Probably, maybe. Let's see it. At this point in the game, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. I think he's got to sit in the pocket here. Slide left. The other thing you got to be aware of, dude. You got three man rush right here. I think you just got to navigate, slide and navigate, hit this guy. And I think at this point he's feeling antsy and he kind of crumbles under this pressure a little bit, creates his own pressure right here. And he's not trusting his offensive line. You have 38 seconds left. I know you're just trying to go make a play, but you had a chance there. You definitely had a chance there. It's okay. Second and 10, one, two, three. Checks it down. Oh man. I mean, I get it. I get why he felt the way he did last play because stuff like this happens, this play, where you just have just guys in your lap, but you've got to have a short-term memory and know that you got to trust it initially. You can't just bail. This play, you had to bail. We've made a play. Nice job getting out of bounds. Now we're sitting at 29 seconds left. Drops back again. Here we go. We have our, our patented eight man protection with three man routes when they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people back. Tough sledding. You're going to get a chip release. You're also, what I don't love here is that they're running this. They're running bunch crossers to the short half of the field. I mean, really the short third of the field. And there's just no space to stress defenders. And that's his interception for the game that seals it. I mean, you can't just throw that up. It's first and 10. Still have a little bit of time. You can't do that. I get it. You're trying to make a play. I don't know where to tell you to go with the ball, but I think this is a guy that in your career, you're going to have to learn to progress back to and trust is this guy. And if you can't not get undercut, that's on him. But this is the one guy that I'm seeing him missing in these progressions on some of these types of situations that just needs to go watch some Aaron Rodgers film because Aaron Rodgers is really good at taking advantage of that route, especially in two minute. And again, I think Spencer Rattler was asked to do a lot and elevate this team. That was not a very good team. They did not have a good scheme. I don't think that he played with what seemed to be answers often. And I know what that feels like. It's uncomfortable. And I still think he has the tools, but I hope he can go somewhere where he doesn't have to be a guy right away, where he can learn, get in the system. And then he's one injury away from going and playing and being a Gardner Minshew type of guy who can elevate a team. Gardner Minshew's elevated every single team that he's gone to. He's made them better. He's made plays for them. He's made them competitive. And now he just signed a dope contract with the Raiders. I see Spencer Rattler's career being a little bit like Gardner Minshew's. Very capable, very much understanding of the game. Put him in the right situation with the right guys around him. He can deliver and he can also go make some plays off schedule. Thanks for watching.